Reggae Just Extra with Ross Dennis. In 1973, Peter Tosh was driving home with his girlfriend Yvonne when his car was hit by another car driving on the wrong side of the road. The accident took the life of Yvonne and severely fractured Tosh's skull. Jacob Killer Miller wasn't so lucky to survive the fate in 1980 as he passed away along with one of his sons in Kingston, Jamaica. To survivals, physical health is usually the initial concern for an injured person after a car accident. However, the mental and psychological aftereffects of the collision can create additional problems. For example, brain injuries cause three-quarters of sufferers to feel like a different person. If the accident caused disfigurement or other severe injuries, a person might deal with depression due to changed circumstances. All these re-echoes a 1994 accident that changed the trajectory of Derek Morgan's life, leaving him with a physical disability. This is the story of Derek Morgan and Max Romeo with Ras Dennis. Before we delve into the story of the ill-fated accident involving Derek Morgan and Max Romeo, kindly subscribe to this channel, like, share, and most importantly hit the notification bell to be the first to watch our next video. Watching Reggae Just Extras Derek Morgan and Max Romeo Edition. In the early 1960s, when the Jamaican recording industry was still very much in its infancy, the local music scene was dominated by a mere handful of performers. Among these musical pioneers were Laurel Aitken, Owen Gray, Wilfred Jackie Edwards, and, of course, Derek Morgan. Derek was born on March 27, 1940, in the parish of Clarendon initially raised by his aunt in a district known as Macho and following the realization that he had contracted a sight disorder, he was sent to live with his mother in Kingston at the age of three. It was subsequently established that Derek suffered from night blindness and after being referred to numerous specialists around the world, a Canadian ophthalmic consultant finally diagnosed him in 1976 as having retina pigmentosis. During his youth, Derek was encouraged to sing in the local church choir by his father, a deacon, and throughout his childhood, music played an important role in the young boy's life. Educated in Kingston's Almondtown Elementary, Derek subsequently graduated to Kingston Senior, completing his education at Model Private. By this time, he was determined to make his mark as a singer and began entering talent shows. His first public performance was in 1957, when he entered and won Joseph Veer John's Opportunity Hour. The measure of his performance that evening is evident by the quality of losing contestants, among whom were Eric Monty Morris, Alton Ellis' sister, Hortense Ellis, along with the aforementioned Owen Gray and Jackie Edwards. His winning performance consisted of storming renditions of Little Richard's frenetic rock and roll hits, Long Tall Sally, Jenny Jenny, and so impressed comic duo, Bim and Bam, that the pair enrolled him to join them on their touring showcase. Following a decades-long push for decolonization, Jamaica gained independence from Britain on August 6, 1962. Morgan, then 22, was inspired and quickly penned the Freedom Anthem Forward March. Forward! March! The song was released on Independence Day and became an immediate hit. On the other hand, Chase the Devil singer Max Romeo was born Max Smith on November 22, 1947 in the country district of St. Anne's. He spent the first 10 years in the parish before moving to Kingston to live with his father after his mother's migration to the UK in 1954. Like so many youths before and after him, young Max soon gravitated towards the city's thriving music scene, and in 1966, he began to work for Ken Lack, the proprietor of the now legendary Caltone label, as a salesman and general errand runner. Together with Kenneth Knight and Lloyd Shakespeare, he formed The Emotions, enjoying an early taste of success on Caltone, 
but this soon soured over disputes as to who was to be the front man in the group. For a brief while, Max was lead singer for the Hippie Boys alongside Aston family man Barrett, Carlton Carly Barrett, Alva Reggie Lewis and Glenn Adams, but after they had recorded Dr. No Go for Miss Pottinger, Max decided to do it alone. His good friend Bunny Lee was just beginning to make a name for himself at this time as a producer, and he gave Max his Romeo name after his amusement on hearing of Max's dedicated attempts to impress a local girl. Max's reputation as a ladies' man must have been on Bunny's mind when he tried to persuade Max to record Wet Dream. Max had written the song but did not want to sing it, and none of Bunny's aggro stable of established artists, including Slim Smith, Roy Shirley, and John Holt, would touch it. Even Derek Morgan, whose Hold You Jack rhythm was to be used for the song, did not want to know. Bunny, a man never short of ideas, realized that the song had definite possibilities. He would later gain the Subaru striker because of his almost innate ability to make hit records. Max was not over keen, but Bunny allegedly told him if he didn't do it, he was out of here, and so they arrived one night at Studio One on Brentford Road to find Coxone himself in charge of the session. When he heard Max sing the opening bars of Wet Dream, he was so disgusted that he refused to go any further and told his apprentice engineer, Errol E.T. Thompson, to take over on the board. Rude or slack records were nothing new and, under the influence of American artists such as Blowfly, were currently undergoing something of a revival, but the format usually tended towards boasts of sexual prowess rather than a concern with erotic dreams causing involuntary ejaculations. Bunny promptly took Wet Dream to the Palmer Brothers in London who promptly released it on their Unity label, the rest they say is history. Back to our main story, Derek Morgan during an interview with Dance Hall Mag detailed the harrowing experience where a boulder dislodged from a hillside, causing the vehicle, driven by Max Romeo, to crash spectacularly while they were en route to Montego Bay for a show that Hopeton Lewis was keeping in 1994. Morgan, who was visually impaired, said in his eagerness and anxiety to escape the crashed car, he may have aggravated an injury he received during the accident. Everybody say all oh, the blind men come out of the car first, he joked. His tall frame posed a challenge, forcing him to contort and squeeze through a window, an action he believes contributed to later physical ailments. The immediate aftermath of the accident seemed innocuous, with x-rays revealing no broken bones. However, six years later, Morgan began experiencing troubling symptoms, including tingling in his toes and swelling under his arm. A subsequent MRI revealed a more severe condition. At the age of 60, Morgan underwent two major surgeries to address these issues, one targeting his neck and the other his lower lumbar region. According to him, these procedures, unfortunately, left him physically disabled, necessitating constant assistance. Because of the injury, I always have people around me to assist me, Morgan, who is the father of Queen Ifrica, shared. Despite these challenges, Morgan has continued to perform all over the world, representing for Jamaican music. Derek Morgan is easily one of the most recognized ska artists, having been conferred with the Order of Distinction in 2001, the Reggae Icon Award in 2022, and the Jamaica Reggae Industry Association, Jeria, Lifetime Achievement Award in 2019. He is known for songs such as Blazing Fire, Don't Call Me Daddy, The Conqueror, In My Heart, Tougher Than Tough, and Seven Letters. Thanks for watching and do remember to subscribe. Give it a like and post a positive comment in the comment section below and I'll see you again very soon for another video. Many thanks for watching Reggae Gist Extra with Ras Dennis.